Welcome to uh, Bike Talk Social Hour. We do this um, every month, bring in some amazing people like Greg and Galen. So um, anyway, so uh, this is put on by the Somerville Bike Committee, but it's really for the entire Boston metro region. Aeronaut is an amazing host. They take amazing care of us for all types of different events. And um, thanks to Shift Bicycle Collective, Jan Marie and friends for uh, doing amazing bike tune-ups ahead of time. Um, a lot of you guys know Galen. He is the community outreach coordinator of um, Landry's. He uh, co-founder of Common Wheels uh, that brings bike equity to disadvantaged neighborhoods and an all-around fun drumming guy. So we're going to pass it on to Galen. So uh, I'm Ken, and here's Galen. All right, cool. I think we only have one microphone, but we have two presenters, so uh, we're going to have to bear with us. Um, Greg, let's get you on this side so that people can actually see the screen. Um, I was asked, can everybody hear me? First off, okay, cool. Um, and the camera crew, are we all set? All right. Um, also, we're being filmed by SCAT TV, so support your local community television. Yeah. All right, so, uh, I do want to give a shout out to Aeronaut, but come on, everybody. Yeah. Woo! Ben, right over here, thank you so much for having us. But we have uh, on our docket today, we're going to talk about drum biking, jam biking, noisy biking, whatever you want to refer to it as, um, and the phenomenon that Greg and I are embodying in our metro Boston area. And, and souls, yeah. Um, and we also, as a teaser, we have a couple of buckets and some bungee cords and some drumsticks. So if you wanted to deck out your bike uh, at the end of this talk and make yourself a jam bike, we can help you. Um, we have three, so don't all rush. Okay, but we have one over here, so we're good. Um, do you want to say anything before we jump into anything? My name is Greg. So this is Greg Hum. He's a really good friend of mine. We met at BU, and uh, we, Tristan, thank you. We are, we're buddies. We're buddies. Um, and we're jam bike buddies. Notice the drumsticks in his pocket, um, but he is happy to see everybody too. And we met at BU. We were co-founders of BU Bikes as a student group um, where drum biking was brought into the real group ride advocacy movement. So uh, we can credit our time together at Boston University um, to making drum biking a, uh, a real and tangible thing. Go ahead and hit it. Cool. So. Who here has been on one of the group rides that Greg and I have uh, noised before? Yeah. Was it a bike party? Yeah. Uh, was it a midnight marathon ride? Yeah, I wasn't there this past time, but I heard it was awesome. Um, what other ones have we done? Was it a critical mass from years ago? Yeah. All right. All right. We're Hub on wheels. Hub on wheels. Anybody see us on store drive? That was the musical mystery rides for common wheels. Awesome. Yeah. So. Um, just generally, do you hear Greg coming? Yeah. If you live anywhere between Porter Square-ish and uh, or Inman Square and BU, you will, yeah, you will hear Greg. Uh, Greg has taken drum biking on the road. We'll get to that in a minute too. Um, so where did drum biking come from? You might ask. Where did drum biking come from, Greg? Um, drum biking came from the dinosaur age, um, but um, the, actually the history of, of making noise on bikes goes way back to the 1800s when marching bands thought it'd be cool to bring music onto bikes and they were 100% correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so. These, these look like, you know, union soldier garb wearing, poke bicycle riding, <laughs> marching bands, uh, John Philip Sousa era. Th there are still bands like this in Europe. I've never seen one in America, but there are um, bicycle tattoos where they have full marching bands ride around in parades and play music like this. And so this is kind of a precursor to some of the things to come in the 20th century. Like this guy in San Francisco who plays a piano bicycle. You may have seen around. I've never seen him, but I've seen his videos. Um, hold it, Tristan. So let's fast forward to 2002 in Boston. A Berkeley College of Music student named Joey Chang was a, uh, a cello major. And he used to hang around 
the bucket jumpers at Downtown Crossing. And one day he decided he needed to bring his bucket home. And he had his handlebars, so he put it on his bicycle. So what happens when you get one and one, you get a bicycle drum. And so was born the bicycle drum with Joey Chang in 2002. This is, his nickname is Cello Joe. And he currently is in San Diego. He's in Berkeley, California. In Berkeley, California now. Close. Yeah. But he used to live in Boston for four years, and if you were in Boston during those four years, you may have seen him around or heard him playing bucket drums on the streets. So Cello Joe was in Boston from 2002 to 2006. 2006 to 2009, he passed it on to his buddy Noah Plotkin, who continued the tradition of riding around and being the only guy around Boston to play bucket drums on bikes. And that's Noah Plotkin, I don't know when. 2008. Um, and this Noah is actually got the same bicycle from Cello Joe. Literally, when Cello the Joe left town, he the one you saw in the video, the entire thing to Noah to carry on the tradition. Yeah. So, at that time, you know, Galen and I were just tadpoles in a pond somewhere. This is like before the dawn of man. <laughs> so, I'm still living in Alston. Then. Okay, or living in Alston. So. <laughs> So this is the evolution of bucket drumming on bikes. It started with Joey Chang in 2002, passed it on to Noah when he moved away from Boston. So 2009, uh, Galen inherited. Did you inherit the actual bike or the, yeah, the bucket? Yeah, the same bike that Joey Chang had. Too. This is the bike that Joey had. Yeah. So this is what, like almost seven years later. What I added to the bike drumming tradition was to bring it out to the masses. So I am there with a hub on wheels number, which meant that that was the incarnation of the group ride bike drumming, which really did bring it into the big, big, uh, the big league. Step out this way so people can see. Um, I, as a undergraduate student, I was friends with Noah um, at the time, and then when Noah left, he literally gave me the bike, and I was like, well, I'm obviously doing this. Um, we should mention that Joey was, in a drum he was not a drummer by trade. He was a cello player. The buddy he passed it on to, Noah, was a drumming student at Berkeley. So um, Galen is a drummer. He actually, uh, you know, both Galen and I are drummers who happen to love bicycling. And that's how, when we saw those guys, we were like, oh, we have to do this. Yep. So, so Galen, Galen got it. Yeah, I got it. And you can see I added a bit of silliness to it, the, the elephant nose. Um, yeah, and then as a, uh, Greg and I were part of the BU Bikes group together, and um, Greg saw me riding around one day, and he said, oh, I could do that. And I said, oh, well, prove it. I said, I, I have to do that. And, uh, I'm a crazy person. And he did it just the same. Yeah, so like one day, it was January, and I thought, oh, you know, what would be the logical thing to do when it was December 9th and 10 degrees outside? I'll put like a pickle bucket on my handlebars and just see what this is like. And, um, you know, at that point, I hadn't played drums since, like, grade school. And I was like, oh, right, I'm banging a bucket now. I feel like a real musician now. And little did I know that, like, that would be the gateway drug to, um, like, seven more years of doing this and being really good at it and then taking videos and traveling around the country and doing that and meeting other people who also bike and drum on their bikes. So, Gail and I got good at... at playing bucket drums on our bikes, and we started thinking, okay, it'd be really fun, it was fun to bring this on bike rides. And um, the big bike ride at the time in 2009 was Critical Mass, and it was this big, fun group bike ride every month, last Friday of the month, and hundreds of people would get together to ride their bikes together. So, Gillian and I started showing up to these bike rides, and we would start, oops, drumming together and it became kind of, this drumming became kind of a staple for these bike rides or like a call to action kind of thing because critical mass at the time was kind of this protest on bikes um, against drivers. If you remember critical mass, it was about making a, a scene. It was about being noticed. It was no longer were we just one or two bikers biking to work. We were enough numbers that we were worthwhile to think about via infrastructure, via safety, via whatever. Um, bikes are generally quiet. 
Bikes are generally low footprint, low impact. They pass by in a matter of seconds and you don't think about them again. But if we're making a ton of noise as you're going past, it hits a little bit more. And so this was more on the outward movement. This was, we weren't doing it necessarily just for ourselves anymore. We were trying to make a notice. Yeah. And so we wanted people to think twice, to look at us twice, to kind of be a little bit shocked, like a little bit of the old fashioned freak outs, just to kind of get people out of their own bubble, to take cycling, not necessarily seriously, because this is quite irreverent, but to at least notice us. And one thing that, you know, the, the dangers that we're still trying to overcome is like, oh, I didn't see you there. Well, how could you not see me there when I'm banging away on this giant bucket and cowbell and cymbals and I have flashing lights and I'm with 300 other people doing the exact same thing? Right. Yeah, so it just became impossible to not notice us because we're making music. Um, so hit next. Yeah, so critical mass. So Galen and I became this integral part of kind of calling the masses to critical mass. Yeah, two words. Um, and... Uh, I mean, it was glorious. Oh, yeah, it was it glorious. Was. This was at the heyday before we had real bike lanes, before we were really being taken seriously by the city, right. by the state. Um, now we've come a long way in terms of getting notice and advocacy, but this was way back when, when critical mass needed to happen to make a statement. So one of the cool things about playing drums on a bike is that you're kind of out in the public, you're playing music in the public, so it's public performance, but it's also moving, kind of like a marching band. And that kind of opens up um, opportunities for engagement with people in ways that we, we wouldn't have otherwise. For example, if you're on a bike ride and you have drums and all of a sudden you're in the middle of a fountain with a hundred people, you're going to start a dance party, it's going to happen. So the dance party would have been fun, but it wouldn't nearly have been as dance party it wouldn't, without the drums. Right. So the, the drums make people move, rhythm makes people move, and um, we've, we've kind of figured out like really cool. neat ways to engage people on the streets. Yeah. So cool. um, we're going to talk a little bit about advocacy, um, yeah. about using our powers for good, using our noise making for good. Do you want to? Yeah, I'll jump into that. Yeah. Cool. So got in the, the, the point of being noticed was kind of the fun part of it. Um, to make people scratch their heads a bit, to get people out of their own Boston bubble, um, to look at biking in kind of a, a fun way. Same way that Skull kind of does it in the middle of the night on Saturday nights. The same way that um, the big bike rides like the Santa rides and all these other rides do. Um, but uh, Greg and I had a unique talent of basically bringing uh, the drumming aspect to it. And it really shocks people to see what we do. Um, and a lot of people ask how we do it, and I'm not really sure. We can get to that in a minute. I'm not really, still don't know, but um, yeah. So one thing I want to mention is that, remember, we're just a bunch of goof, we're just a couple of goofballs who happen to be friends who like drumming and biking. Yeah. So like we were in college, we started this bike club to get people together for bike rides. And we're done with college now, but we've kind of channeled that, in, that energy into music and getting people together on bikes and we'll just talk about where that's taken us now and so i think that the cool yeah so uh we are bike advocates at heart um we see the power of the movement we know the community the strength of it the growth of it the solidarity that we've all built and we're all in this um we all know it and it's it's really powerful. I don't know of another community that has come essentially from scratch. When we were students at BU, there was no club. There was, there, there was a, an anger to bike advocacy. And now there's a celebration to bike advocacy. And we feel that we were able to take the protest movement and make it more of a parade, which really is the power of what we've done. And I feel, I'm getting a little heady here, but um, we will change hearts and minds through smiles with our drumming, more so than by blocking a red light and shaking our fist at the drivers who were stopping. Um, so we gave up on critical mass. Uh, we found other avenues for our energy. Um, I, in Alston, started a group called Common Wheels. Who here has known, been to, participated? Awesome, it's great to hear. You all rock. 
Um, part of that was uh, we, we have a ride called the Musical Mystery Ride series, which you should all participate in, where we go to secret places around and we have bands. And it's very fun, very low key. It's not a protest. Even though it's a big group ride and we're blocking the lanes and we're getting through there. Um, this is Steven, who is a balloon artist um, who is hilarious. And he just showed up with a bunch of balloons and a ukulele. And we were like, all right, we have the venue for you. Here's your space. Um, do what you got to do, Tristan, if you would. Um, bike party, please. So I used to ride Critical Mass with Galen. That's like kind of how we met. And uh, one of the, my favorite th aspects about Critical Mass was just the sheer number of people on bikes together. And, um, you know, I wasn't so into the protest aspect after a while because there was a lot of anger there. Um, and in California, a new movement kind of came out of Critical Mass called Bike Party. And the idea was to literally have a party on bikes with hundreds of people every month. Kind of like a, like a Critical Mass 2.0. So um, a few years ago, me and a few friends decided to bring that bike party to Boston uh, from California. There was a girl, Elodie Garcia. She moved here from DC and bike party was her favorite thing there. And she said, why isn't there a bike party in Boston? And she got a few of us together and we made it happen. So every month now, um, there is a party on wheels on the second Friday of every month that meets at the Copley Square at seven o'clock. You should all come because there's music on the ride, costumes, and an after party that usually involves nutritional water. So um, in the winter, we end the bar. In the summer, we like to end the beach. And that's kind of where my advocacy has taken us. Uh, Galen and I get together and we play drums together, just like good old times. Yeah. And it's not about us anymore. It's really about, it's, it's really about getting people together yeah, for party bikes. Is everybody's own party, which yeah. is fantastic. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Tristan. <laughs> yeah, we have a blast. It is so much fun. I mean, you've all been a part of this. This is like pretty much the most fun you can ever have. Um, and everybody l jives along with what we're doing, but we have the most fun of anybody, I will say. Um, so this is kind of the photo to encourage you to strap a bucket to your drum. Um, or if you can't do the bucket, uh, if you have an aluminum frame, it probably has some good resonance. Um, you can strap a cowbell to the jam. And um, we'll go to the how-to in a minute, but it is just smiles. That is our new and, bike advocate. And dancing. And dancing, Miles yes. And yeah. Dancing. Yeah. yeah. And if we can get the cars to honk along with us, if we can get the cars to wave at us and the folks on Newberry Street to give us thumbs up, we, yeah, every, every month, we know we've made it. Um, we don't piss people off anymore because we brought bike drumming. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, a few of bike rides. So Hub on Wheels. Um, this is from Store Drive. Um, probably the most awesome um, way to see 5,000 people at once. On Store Drive. On Store Drive. Um, I love that. We can play the guardrail, which literally you can hear it like half a mile down. Um, what else we got? Um, noisy bicycling is an epidemic. Go for it. Yeah, so uh, so far we've only talked about bucket drumming on bikes in Boston. But, um, you know, when, when you have, <clears throat> it's kind of like a disease where I feel like I have to spread it to other cities, this drumming. So I, I, I have a folding bike and, and the bucket I can take on and off or I can go to a new city and, and buy a bucket and just bring my sticks. Uh, whenever I've been traveling places, I, I've tried to bring it to other cities. I, I've connected with other bike parties around the country um, critical Mass in Miami, and then Bike Party in East Bay. So I've met a few other people along the way who have also attached instruments to their bikes. And let's... That's us. Oh, that's us. I don't... Yeah, this is out of place. That's fine. Bike Party. This is, this is um, Joey Chang, the, the guy, the father of bucket... That's Cello Joe. It's Cello Joe, the guy who started all the, the bucket drumming on bikes. I, um, I did a big bike trip in California, and I, and I Facebook messaged him. I said, hey, we should meet up, because I, I do this crazy thing that you started 10 years ago. <laughs> and we did, and we rode around Berkeley, California, with our bucket jumps together for the first time ever. We rode around Berkeley, California for a while, and um, it was a little fun adventure. So that was cool. Um, another guy, I went to an East Bay bike party. It's in Oakland, California. 
and I met a guy um, who had like electronic drums on his handlebars cool. and like this huge amp on the back of his bike and you know he was doing all sorts of weird sounds throughout the whole bike ride and I was joining in on that so that was really cool um, Kristen you hit next and then this is in uh, Baltimore Maryland this guy is Tim Farrell what I don't know what he's doing he's got a it's like a it's like a floor tom like from an actual drum set that he strapped onto his front bike rack and he's got a cowbell and he was like hand drumming and he had one stick and I have video but not here right now but um, we I met him in Baltimore I Facebook messaged him again the power of Facebook and we went for a bike ride party, by the way, it's all right like 2,000 people yeah we're getting there yeah we have like 500 here it's still fun here you don't have to go to Baltimore to go to yeah. bike party it's fine this is like this is a real nationwide, worldwide movement. That right. We're all part of. So the guy in East Bay in Oakland I met, he was a bike party guy. Tim's also a bike party guy, but in Baltimore. And so like the whole bike party movement is very connected in this really neat way. So how do we do it? You might ask. Yeah, how do you do it? How do I do it? You might ask. How can we help you do it? Well it's pretty freaking easy. All you really need, Tristan, if you would, is a bucket a bungee cord, a bicycle, and some drumsticks. And you can find the bucket at any construction site. Um, I wanted to bring some buckets today, so I literally rode around Alston and found three buckets. I could have found 15. Um, I bought some bungee cords at Dixon Bros on, in Harvard Square. So for the low cost of a buck 89 um, and some $1.99 drumsticks, you too can make yourself a bucket bike. Um, a couple of tips, and we can go through a how-to, too. We actually do have buckets and, and bungees. Um, you should always bring your cowbell. <laughs> Is that, and how you mount your cowbell can be a variety of ways. I actually have a, uh, like a real Guitar Center bought drum stand mount for a cowbell. And drum stands are roughly the same width as handlebars. So you can just buy a mount. They're like manufactured and professionally made. Greg just took a bungee cord and strapped his plastic cowbell to the side of his bucket. We're real low tech, um, which is actually very good because you break the buckets pretty regularly if you play them hard enough. Um, you gotta always bring your friends. You should always have a hand on the brakes. Um, on my bicycle here, it's low to the ground. My seat is way low, just in case I need to bail or put my foot down. Um, and I have coaster brakes, so everything's in my legs. So I can kind of free up my hands for either just steering or, you know, loosely putting a side of my hand or wrist on to help steer. But I can brake and control. Um, the, the go and the stop is all in my legs. Greg does have hand brakes, but he's got uh, interrupter brakes along with the normal handlebar brakes, too. So you can come check out our rigs. And it... It does work, um, as long as you maintain control and um, are always pretty aware of how to emergency stop in case you need to. Which actually comes in more handy in the big group rides, because bikers are more unpredictable sometimes uh, than car doors that open up. So it's always good to, you should never not be in control of your bicycle in any situation, especially when you're like mid, you know, polyrhythm set going down downtown crossing. For it. Um, the different rigs, basically, this is not just about drum biking, this is about noisy bicycling, this is about the movement behind it, so I'm just going to jump to the end of the conclusion here. Um, we have just two of us representing a whole movement that is making biking more prominent, more known, more mainstream by making it more fun. When we ask people all the time, why do you bike? Why do you bike to work? Oh, uh, well, it's quicker. Uh, the T breaks down. Um, I got to get my exercise, blah, 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 blah. But then you press them a little bit. And you're like, well, what did you think on your ride today? Oh, like, I really loved riding on the river today. Or I really enjoyed, you know, X, Y, Z. It's all about the, the fun aspect to it. It's all about the emotional connection of the entertainment, the enjoyment aspect of riding a bike. For us, it's just about drum practice. That's all it's about. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, we're not professional drummers. Um, Greg does have a band, though. We should check it out. It's called Strawberry Jam. Is that right? Yeah, Strawberry Jam. It's adorable. Um, but it, it, it really is about the fun. And if you can make biking fun and help people get over these barriers, then they're going to keep riding. And 
I personally started really riding in Boston, thanks to Critical Mass, based off the enjoyment of riding in a big group. Um, and it was these bike parties, these musical mystery rides that keep people coming back, these midnight marathon rides that people latch onto and really remember. Yeah, your daily commute is great, and you should be a daily commuter, but you know, you're doing it really because you enjoy it, more so than anything else. Um, so we, we do like to think that we have progressed since 2002, um, where we don't necessarily need to protest our rights on the streets anymore. We really can celebrate what we're doing. And people have bought in. Mainstream media, mainstream politics, uh, mainstream infrastructure really is you know, giving us the space and kind of okay with it. It's amazing to see a thousand people on a Halloween ride that really do tie up traffic pretty nasty and it, it, it is a shame and it kind of sucks. And the cops are there to help. They're not there to harass. And because when we ride past, we're smiling. We're not a threat anymore. And I've always felt it strange that bikes can be a threat to the drivers in cars, and they feel very threatened by us taking over the roads. Never really understood that. But that is completely thrown out of the water when you get kind of an aggressive SUV driver, and they look over, and you got a fat beat going, and they smile and clap along. Yeah. Is there anything else? That's good. Is that it? Is that it? I think we have Fiend. Thank you all.